Okay, I'm Lauren Sionan from Turner Designs and we have a fluorometer here that can give you cell per mil abundance of algae between the 1050 micron size class uh, as a rapid compliance check for ballast water to make sure that the ballast water is within uh, compliance levels. We want clean water in our ballast clean tank, but it's hard to tell because they're so small. That's right, because you can't see them. So what you're going to do is take a sample using this neat little innovative syringe here. Okay. <laughs> I take syringe. Yeah, you take that one and then uh, take that sample just from your ballast tank and you put that into your cuvette and you put the cuvette into your sample compartment and you press read. And that's as easy as it gets. You press read and it's going to read the sample for you. Now it's going to say, it's going to tell you whether you have a high amount of fluorescence or a low amount of fluorescence that correlates to how much algae are in the water. This is telling you insert a 10 micron uh, sample. So what that means is there was a lot of fluorescence from this cuvette right here. Okay. There may be a lot of algae, but what other what other things can cause that? Dissolved organic materials. So we take our handy uh, cuvette here. You take a filter that has a 10 micron sieve. You put the filter on the end of the cuvette, and we filter all of the algae that are greater than 10 micron out of the sample. Now I have a 10 micron filtrate that I'm going to put into here. And why I do that? Because I don't want to see anything less than 10 interfering with my signal. So then I press read, and it's going to tell me that I have a low risk of contamination of contaminating my surrounding water. Cool. So now, and I can tell how much algae in there. I have 15 cells per mil. Now that's above the regulation. Okay. Yeah, the regulation has to be less than 10. I have 15. But look at my activity. It's 0.14, very low. The cells in this sample, right here. So it's doing the total low. count of the of the individual cells, but then the activity is related to chlorophyll. Activity is related to how photosynthetically active the cells are. So if they're photosynthetically active, they have a likely a high survival rate if they're if they're okay, cool. disposed into the environment. But if they're not photosynthetically active, they'll die as soon as they get released. So I'm okay to take my ballast water and dump it overboard. Cool. And that's what that's all. And so you guys are mostly selling to uh, big ship ports, operators, uh -huh. ship owners, anyone working on a ship who has a treatment system they want to validate or verify, and port state officials. As a matter of fact, if your kids want to buy one, go <laughs> pick one up. That's how easy they are to use, okay? Awesome. Anyone who wants to run ballast water to see if it's within compliance, should buy one of these tools. And, and, and what's the cost for a unit roughly? Under four grand. Okay. For okay. A, for a package, and this is the so package. Four K for everything. Four K for everything, and you get your three pack of filters. These are reusable; they're nylon mm -hmm. mesh. You get two beautiful glass cuvettes. You get a filter cleaning kit. You get your ballast check, of course. You get your cables. You have a wristband to keep the ballast check from falling into mm -hmm. the ballast tank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, it does float. <laughs> you have a RS232 cable, USB cable, USB drive, and the most important thing, a box of Kim wipes. There you go. So now this is so this is designed to be hooked up to your computer. So it's not so it's it's uh, you're typically doing this not so much in the hold per se, but rather taking samples to this at a field station. No, okay. this will store 1,000 data points for oh, you, well. so you can just start running your samples wherever okay. you are. Okay. And then when you're done. You plug it into your computer and say, send data, and everything gets sent to your computer. Okay. All the data will be stored on the computer. I mean, on the uh, valve structure. So this is cool. So, so you guys are doing this now, but this is just because you guys are trying to be good. Or, or is there is there some standard you guys have to meet with ballast water detection? The ballast discharge standard, yes. But, so so this, this this meets that standard. Not just not just consistent with what they're saying, but I mean, is there some kind of certification you no. guys have to go through? Yeah, sorry, There's okay, no okay. certification okay. for right. these things. It's, whether, it's how well your instrument works right. to indicate whether ballast water are within compliance. And who's who? You, so far, who, how long have you guys been making these for? Like the last couple of years, or the last year or so? Or well, the ballast water discharge centers were just recently ratified by all the different participating countries. But this unit, how long? This have you guys unit been itself has been out for about a year. And who's are your customers? Mostly U.S. Are they mostly outside? They're all over. Where right now, find? mostly outside, because the U.S. is still in uh, a little battle yeah, yeah, yeah. between yeah, the, the different background. departments. Yeah. <laughs> so as soon as they get their stuff underway. I think they'll be adopting a tool like this, or a similar tool like this, or even this tool, 
this method of determining cell abundance. Quick and dirty. I should quick say. And dirty. Yeah, quick and dirty. All right, man. Thanks so much. Turn designs, ballast water detection. Pretty cool. You got it.